NVK, you have the honor to be our first three-peat guest that we've had on here. Ooh. And and the only guest, to be honest, we felt comfortable slinging dumpster jokes with at, at any point right off the bat. So I'm we are glad gonna, I'm able to contribute. Yeah, we want to give that golden dildo repartee from our last conversation some what for, you know. we got to get back into that thing. Just wondering yeah. if maybe the Skunk Works at Coin Kite has come up with a steampunk-style dildo. Uh, that's cypherpunk secure. Anything in that of that nature, we would be interested in hearing and buying. I see you really want me to bear back your pod right from the beginning, huh? <laughs> exactly, dude. We want to lose <laughs> listeners we right the, the first couple of minutes. Yeah, we want to see the okay. teeth. I see. Well, there is nobody listening anymore, so uh, exactly. Now we can essentially talk about uh, some shitcoin or something. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, these are exciting ones. We were saying we we love every single guest that comes on here. No disrespect, but. Uh, it feels like a fireman just walked into the room here, Josh, and it could get ugly. So put earmuffs on, uh, throw the kids somewhere they can't hear. We're going to have some fun today. Uh, on public service announcement before we get into the substance, uh, I have a mustache for those that haven't seen the video. Uh, blonde mustaches do matter, and this is fuller than maybe it looks on video, but I'm on borrowed time. My wife wants this thing gone. So if you want to see this thing die jet black, I don't know how many episodes ago we referred to it, but there's a guy at our department that grows a mustache on an annual basis and then dyes it, dyes it jet black on the day before he shaves it. If you want to see jet black mustache, let us know. Uh, but <laughs> You know, I am on a solid campaign of getting Steve to grow a, ma a man's beard instead of having, you know, a lady's mustache. <laughs> <laughs> we can't, we mustache. can't grow beards. NVK. Really? We're not allowed to. No, yeah. no facial they burn? hair. No oh, facial hair below the lip the line. The respirator. The respirator, exactly. Even yeah. though, I mean, it's pr fairly proven you can wear a respirator over a beard. Yeah. It's not quite as sealed, but you'll be fine. It's, it's enough, positive, right? it's positive I mean, like, pressure. Well, you know, you're fine. It's, just you the, it's the way for chiefs to be doms. They want us to be their subs, ah, and this is, this is their tactic. Yeah. So ah, we have to, you know, gotta, gotta own them. Because you know, you know a man is not a slave when he has a beard. Exactly, it's dude. like a hundred percent. That man does not have a real boss. Let's right. rise up, dude. Josh, we got work to <laughs> yeah. do. We do. Yeah, we got to You guys can mirrors. paint it. You, you know, just just paint your face. Go some <laughs> ran, henna or whatever. Oh, you know, like, start heart. showing up like that. Then they can't claim as the respirator. You're right. Brilliant. Let's get that in the contract. No <laughs> facial sure. hair below it? the lip line. You are though able to paint your jawline jet black. Yeah, Ooh. well, at least you could paint on like a uh, a chin strap or something, you know, to look a little bit like you have a beard. Just the tapped on chin strap. Those were yeah, yeah. cool like 20 years ago, you know? You know, like kids back. do for Halloween and stuff to pretend they have beards, you know, like they just sort yeah. of like get a yeah. marker, you know, in the morning, marker it out. Yeah, dude, there's nothing in the there's nothing in the rules and regs that say we can't just paint on a beard. I mean, as long as the respirator covers and seals, we're good. This there is basically go. how the fire service works, though. NVK is like you have the the hogs in the pen like us trying to make as much room as possible f for ourselves and then the farmers trying to keep the gates in it's just a giant <laughs> hundred year game of uh tug of war how are yep. you nvk give us a little update I i'm good man uh we've uh, we've been busy we spent uh the holiday break uh building a a noster relay uh brb.io and sort of messing with that and uh you know like we're pumping out the the NFC uh, sets cards and the tap signers. We're working on another uh, version of code card. Man, it's just like I, I'm just staring at my desk here, which has expanded into multi desks, where it's just like prototypes and crap on top of them. It's just like never ending. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's it's been fun. It's been fun. Are you How guys do you, generally working on the next version of Cold Card almost as soon as the the new version comes out? What's yeah, the uh, so, what's the runway on something like that? So we we essentially start working on the next version as soon as we start production of the previous version. Sorry, uh, as as soon as we start the production of the new version, we start working on the following version. But uh, but this time we're also working on a, on a parallel device that uh, we're still sort of like. Not 100% sure we're going to ship it, but like it's like, say, 90% where the final sort of stage of, of development for it. There will be sort of like a, a, a 
kind of like a, a premium, more mountain man version of, of the existing hardware will cost more money and sort of be have extra things on it. You mm. should call it the Pro. Just just copy <laughs> Apple completely. It's the Coin right. Kite Pro. The Maxi. The, the, the Maxi. Coin Maxi. The Coin yeah. Kite Maxi, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. How, how does it feel to be, you know, a CEO of a company with a lot of important shit to do and you're just literally going to waste an hour with two degenerate firemen who are recording in their basements. <laughs> How does that feel? I, I don't know who the CEO of the company is. I mean, I'm just like a busy guy at the company. <laughs> 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 Listen, if I ever, uh, if I'm ever running this company in a way that I don't have time to have DJ and talks for an hour, like There's I'm, a problem. I'm done with it. I'm totally yeah. done with it. That is a, uh, that's an awesome rule to follow. Seriously. Like as a, I could see myself or anyone in that position getting themselves so just stressed out and so deep into the, you know, into the, into the woods there that you couldn't have any fun at all. Like this is probably a nice little break to just chill for a little bit. Yeah. yeah. It's a good thing to do. Uh, we, we run a different joint. Like this is, this is not how great. <laughs> Dude, we, we, we sense that. Like when we, when we set, when we started to scale and you guys decided to partner with us, we were, you know, we're signing all this like, official legalese like what we do for the ad for these other companies is like screw totally get it no no problem but and we're like and coin kites there and we can literally just say whatever the fuck we want every week in this ad it's just total wild west you know and yeah no because you know listen like contrary to many other companies we make a product that like people actually use and like yeah so like it's like by all means i mean if you like the product i'm pretty sure you're gonna just like talk about how you like the product like it's exactly. not like a lot to it yeah, it's exactly. pretty simple. Um, yeah. So, so that's, um, that's where we're at. The, I don't want to dive into business right off the bat here, but <laughs> there is one thing that I, I want to hear your opinion on, your thoughts on, and I know Dan wants to as well. This core dev hack that happened in the last uh, week or so. So it's my understanding this is a very simplistic. I'm going to explain it very simply. I'm sure you can dive much deeper into it. But from my understanding, basically he had a hot wallet on his laptop that had – whatever amount of Bitcoin on it. And he had, he left it on there, you know, connected to the internet. Somebody was able to infiltrate that laptop, get to those keys and then able to drain his wallet. Yeah. Um, so, so here's the thing we don't know, right? There has not been a postmortem, uh, like publicly with the actual details. Uh, we only know like sort of like his semi sort of like all over the place tweets about it. Um, so it's hard, really hard to speculate because, hackers are pretty smart and when they do stuff against like smart computer people they often do very advanced things um so oftentimes you're never going to even find out how you actually happen to so so you know until we see some more details you know there's a few stories like that sort of like a few sort of scenarios that people came up with but it's kind of like, you know, it's just like pissing in the wind because they're based on ideas that like, you know, many people similar in to his position could have been hacked. Uh, maybe that's a better way of framing it as yeah. opposed to like speculating on his exact uh, uh, scenario. I think a lot of people, I mean, myself included, when you see something like that start, you know, proliferating on on uh, Twitter or whatever, it makes you your, your sphincter kind of tighten up a little bit. And you think to yourself like, shit, I should go check my stuff because, you know, this guy obviously knows his shit with, you know, computer science and he got hacked and that makes people worry, and especially people that really you know, have a vague idea of how these things work. So I guess what I'm looking for here is maybe assuage people's worries about if they have their Bitcoin on a, you know, cold stored offline, how this doesn't affect their setup in any way. Yeah, Even so, if you so, lie straight to our face, just, just pet our hair <laughs> quietly. Right, and, right. No, and no, if anything, actually... The average person is way more secured than all the shadowy super coders uh, for, for a multitude of reasons. Um, the people we see more wrecked more often are people who are highly skilled and highly technical because they have the tendency of customizing their setups, building their own stuff, and they're not benefiting from the economies of scale that right. the average person gets, right? So, like, you guys are running your cold cards. There is, like, you know, like, a ton of people out there are cold cards, and there's bad guys trying to break them. So, like, every time we find an issue with it, we fix it for everybody else. So you're essentially hiding in the crowd and also benefiting from the economies of scale on that. Um, and then you're not customizing stuff, 
right? You're just grub brain. You, you know, like I, I absolutely love the the bell curve meme, right? Like it's like <laughs> grub brain there, you know, like I'm going to do it like simple. I'm not going to – because then every time you go do your Bitcoining, right, you're not thinking about it. Right. right. Like, because there's nothing custom to do. You're just following the steps. Right. Like if you're in a, in an emotionally altered state, right. You just fought the girlfriend, you know, like maybe, you know, you have a tummy problem and you're not really paying attention <laughs> to your Bitcoining. Uh, you know, you could make a mistake and boom, your own. Right. Uh, but now if you're using a hardware device that's like specifically made for this, it's it's more likely than not going to prevent you from making that mistake, right? And even if <clears> you make the mistake, you're protected. So so essentially, like you know, you're okay now. Again, if you are that sub shadowy super coder, uh, you probably have your you know your cubes OS or your you know super sanitized uh, a Linux laptop, vintage you know 2000 before somebody made a specific chip and blah 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 and you have this massive blog post about how you built that amazing setup um and then like you know you got a tummy problem that day or you broke up with a girlfriend and you forget and you accidentally stick a, a usb stick on it that has like some malware right it's like boom money gone right like you, you know that's not gonna happen to your cold card right because it's right. designed for you not to make that stupid mistake um so, so, so that's the idea, right? It, it really is like maintaining that sort of like sanity, being having a sanitized setup that is like completely separated from everything else, uh, really helps. Um, and uh, you know, make sure you did your dice right, or you actually use the code card number to random generator, right? Like, you know, I've seen people sometimes do get lazy with the dice thing, and then they just put in their own, like the same number hundred times and your Bitcoin is going to be gone if you do that. Um, cause low entropy, there's a lot of people watching low entropy space out there. Hmm. Um, hmm. what else? Um, Wait, yeah, I, I mean, yeah, I, I think this is a great opportunity to just go back to simplicity for people because it, it, fear is a powerful manipulator. And for mm -hmm. me, I, I don't want to throw stones that are too heavy here, but I, I would use the phrase pissed off at Udi mm -hmm. and and CZ for how they handled this. Oh, for um, sure. You had Udi saying you shouldn't, basically you shouldn't manage your own keys, CZ retweeting it. It's honestly sickening to me because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, Bitcoin is completely broken without self-custody. Like this project is essentially pointless. The whole decentralization impetus behind it is completely, completely gone, right? And these guys are smart enough to understand that cold storage done in its simplest capacity is in in virtually any regard we can envision ironclad. Like so back to simplicity for someone that's freaking out about this, the way Josh and I think this through. We're a couple dumb boneheaded firemen, but we've been in this space to understand get yourself a cold card, get sparrow, generate your seed out on it, back it up in steel, don't share it with anybody. And don't plug it in your thing. Like, exactly. It's, it really, it's not that hard. Totally. It, for mm -hmm. for you know, we do talk about the the simplest configuration you can use a cold card in, which is workable for someone that's in the space. But if you have bought your cold card and you're using it in wired configuration, start migrating and practicing and working towards offline Bitcoin. Because if you have this thing completely off the internet and you and you follow the the very simple steps as we've said here, if you can assemble a Lego set for ages eight and up, you can figure out how to do this with a cold card. You got to start learning. You got to start exploring. And if you keep it simple, this is true of so many things in Bitcoin, especially as you're trying to accumulate a stack, you're, you're going to protect yourself. Yeah. I mean, listen, and if you're going to plug in cold card into a computer, get yourself an extra cheap computer that you don't go check porn sites, you know, that you don't use for other stuff. Keep it clean and use that as the computer you plug it into. Um, Firemen, did you hear that? All the firefighters mm -hmm. listening? Uh, separate yes. computer. Yeah. As far as uh, just talking about computer security, porn sites obviously are, you know, destination number one to pick up malware. What do you think are maybe just the slightly lower rung places where you can pick that up? Maybe like just mysterious emails, oh, phishing attacks? everything. Yeah. I mean, listen, nowadays, assume all computers are compromised. That, yeah. That, that is like the, the, the correct mental model. Okay. Just assume everything is compromised and For start sure. from the premise, right? So, so the then, like, 
because then you're not worried anymore, right? You're like, well, that's why I'm not plugging my cold card in, right? Like right. that thing is probably has got virus and it's going to start to steal keys, right? Like, <laughs> exactly. So I guess what um what I'm getting at is that computer. Let's say it's a Chromebook or something. You want to basically not use that thing for email. You don't want to use it for internet searching. You just Correct. use it for the cold card connection if that's how you want to do it. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And and you can also like I mean if you want to get a little bit more uh, interesting. Uh, and uh, you can run uh, Tails, uh, which is just a USB Linux, right? Like it's it's a Linux and a USB stick. So it's like a that, virtual computer you plug into yes. your regular laptop? Okay. And the cool thing about Dell One is that Dell One is all pre-made. It comes with Electrum already. Uh, and, and it forgets everything once you turn it off. I'm going to have to play around with and, that. And, wow. and like you can't – like malware can't install itself there. Like it's like there's just – you know, it could – very complex stuff. But as, like – General purposely speaking, it's just it's pretty reasonable. Yeah. Uh, another thing that's very helpful is for people to use Macs instead of Windows. Um, it, is that it still is, true? I've heard that yeah. in the past, but Macs have become so much more prolific that I've, yeah, I don't I know, know if that was still true. It's just that the permission set and and uh, and the original foundation of the OS is substantially uh, better. I, I would argue, actually, like that that a standard non messed up Mac out of the factory configuration is more secure than your average Linux that ships with laptops, like yeah. substantially. Uh, you know, Linux, you actually need to do some work to get it nice and close. Uh, and the Mac also has a lot of like sort of mummy features, you know, that doesn't want to let you do stuff. Yeah, uh, we've actually don't found turn those that. off. We don't... found that out with putting the, we had some new audio interfaces yeah. and in order to make them work, they had to be, we had to give them kernel access. You had to like restart you yeah. had to hold the power button, go into like the setting. It was, I mean, it was kind of a pain in the ass, but it's cool to see how secure these things are. Yeah, it, it's it's yeah, it, you know, they are better, but they're definitely not infallible, right? Like it, right. it's like, you know, if you really want to get up there, get up there. But again, if you're using, you know, cold card air gapped, you know, your concern about the computer is a lot lower. You should still like double check the transactions and do all that stuff, but like. You know, you're, you're a lot more ahead than than everybody else. Do you think a lot of your, we'll call them competitors, are going to move towards more air gap solutions? Like it's kind of startling to me how few people are are doing this. I doubt well, what's it. What's your thought on that, and why aren't they doing it? Because it seems like such a low hanging fruit from an opsec best practice standpoint. Uh, I doubt it uh, because a lot of them require the the their their counterpart application on the computer to do things uh they were not able due to you know economic reasons skill reasons design reasons to accomplish that uh <laughs> there is one competitor that literally wrote a a very very bad cherry picking uh uh blog post about how air gapping is useless um i i mean like Aside from just hitting the person in the head, you know what I mean? Like with like a pickle, like <laughs> really, like it's like, like, I mean, like, I mean, how do you take that with a straight face? Uh, you know, there is no wire, right? Like, I mean, like there is no remote attack that is like, you know, except for like, you know, CIA Stuxnet sort of like mission impossible here. Like, right. The, the only reason they're going to get the keys off the device is they come to your house and, like, beat you, right? Like With a so, massive pickle. <laughs> with yeah. a huge with pickle. With a massive pickle. Yeah. Hey, right? if there's so, any pickle farmers out there, any, <laughs> send us a huge pickle. Like a huge one. Huge. Biggest one we've ever seen. Yeah. The size of an eggplant. <laughs> um, so, yeah, don't. Uh, like, a, a good way of doing a security is not listening to people on Twitter. <laughs> you know? Like, yeah. Uh, you know, it's like, don't listen to people who are like ultra known for being ultra smart, who do super complicated setups because they are very knowledgeable. It also don't listen to like, you know, like marketing idiocity, uh, uh, because you know, yeah. they can't accomplish the same, but it's yeah. hard. It's hard to navigate this space. Yeah, I mean, what is. you said about getting lost in the crowd makes a lot of sense. Like just. You know, if you're going to use a cold card, it's perfect. You're in the crowd. If you're going to use an alternative, make sure it's a mainstream version and you yes. get it. Make sure you don't buy it from some <clears throat> random person. You know, get it directly from the company and just follow the directions and keep your shit on steel and back it up properly and you're going to be just fine. I mean, th there is a reason why, like, pretty much everybody in this industry just say, like, use a cold card, treasure, or ledger, right? I mean, like, you know, we all have different sets of trade offs, right? 
Uh, but like it's within reason that like you're you're substantially more upgraded with any of the solutions, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, so yeah, I, I mean, I'm biased to my set of trade-offs and the things that my device does, but you know, like being honest, like these are three reasonable solutions. Um, like everything else becomes a problem, right? Because they're either too small or they, they're too shitty or, you know, or it's like the repackaging of somebody else's code or, you know, whatever. Like there's, there's a multitude of reasons why you probably don't want that unless they have a very large install base and they become a, a respected sort of like choice in, in the, in the industry. We're going to take a quick break here to remind you folks to get your Bitcoin 2023 tickets. The Bitcoin conference hosted by Bitcoin magazine is going down once again in Miami Beach, May 18th to the 20th, 2023. Josh and myself, Dan, will be there. And if you're dead serious about Bitcoin or interested in learning more, you should be there too. Join the two of us for the world's largest gathering of Bitcoiners as we celebrate yet another year of progress towards hyper-Bitcoinization. It's going to be a signal-packed party with a smorgasbord of outstanding Bitcoin education and access, and you can get 10% off tickets with code BCB23. That's BCB23 for 10% off. Ticket prices will go up significantly and incrementally from now until the conference. So get on it, folks. Yeah, it's a good message. Um, looking back on 2022, folks did a lot at CoinKite. And I think what I'm most impressed with is that you kind of have the entire suite of custody solutions from what is now startlingly simple, like grandmother proof, all the way to shadowy super coder type shit. Yeah. And and you've really you've filled in some of those gaps in in my opinion, watching this year. Walk us through twenty twenty two, what it what excited you most at CoinKite, and then maybe we can bleed that into twenty twenty three, what the what the vision is here moving forward. I kind of lose track of the stuff we ship. I think we have like 50 SKUs on the store now. Um, so I think I think Sats Card and Tap Signer came out in uh, last year, uh, if I remember right. And yep. uh, you know, Tap Signer is a different set of trade offs than Cold Card. Of course, it's not like you know the same level of security. It's not the same idea. But like, we wanted to enable people to have a middle ground solution that is like like truly 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 simple like tap to pay simple right and, and that was the idea behind uh, uh tap signer so so that you, you you don't have to trust the phone app with keys uh, the phone app just uses this this essentially smart card that taps uh for you to co-sign or sign your your transaction right Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and you can use that in a very secure environment where you have like that as just a co-signer and a multi-sig, or you can use it as a single signer with like less money. That's how I like to describe it. Uh, Nunchuck is a great wallet that sort of like really did a lot of upgrading this year, uh, our friend Hugo. Um, and uh, they, they do now collaborative multi-sig as well, and they do use the tap signers. They leverage them properly. Uh, anyways, it's, it's pretty cool. Uh, and it's really, launched. it's really cool. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll chime in here. Like that, you know how you, you do this every day, but there's certain pieces of tech you play with where you're like, holy shit, that's the future. Like when I set up the nunchuck two of three, I did the first one I did was my Mark four, a tap signer, and then just one key on the phone and the simplicity of setting that up and then conceptualizing like, holy shit, this is really secure. Two of these keys are completely off the phone and how easy it was. I was like, Wow, this has come a long way even since we got involved in cold storage back in 2017. It it did yeah. blow blow me away to be honest. Yeah, no, it, it really is like NFC is magic, right? It feels like magic. It's high bandwidth, so you can do complex transactions. They're, they're just like a bunch of, and it's fairly secure as well. Like the connection is 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 like very good, um, and uh, you know it, it just. We need to, to make sure that the people who are phone first, right? So, like, there is 8 billion people in the world who don't who might not have a computer, right? So, like, mm -hmm. they only have a phone or a tablet. So, like, how do we bring these people over to, like, you know, like, like semi-code storage sort of solution, right? And, and we found the NFC to be, like, a great solution for that because then you can have a shitty screen. You don't have to have a camera. You can keep the price down. Right. Uh, you know, tap signer is, like, 40 bucks, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
and, and like there is no other hardware wallet in the market that's like forty dollars. <clears throat> like it's it's crazy. Uh, and uh, so yeah, that that was the idea. It's like how can we like grow this the self custody pie like to be ginormous. Yeah. Yeah, the, I think the perspective that we kind of take on this is Sparrow is first as far as desk, desktop stuff goes. And I think I've transitioned over now to Nunchuck on phone. Like that, those are easily the two uh, premium apps for Bitcoin storage, in my view. Um, and yeah, like you said, Dan, I think Nunchuck is a step change improvement for, yeah. for phone applications, especially when you're considering multi sig. Uh, well, yeah, we, and, we, and even just from a, uh, sorry to interrupt, yeah. NVK, but from a, uh, just, your basic hot setup. Like I usually keep around a hundred bucks of Bitcoin on my phone, typically just to like, Hey, you're new. Like here's, t- yeah. here's three bucks, whatever. I've transitioned to just nunchuck with a tap signer, just bam. And it's, it's, it's right there in your wallet. It's as convenient as, you know, a credit card to spend, but it's got that extra layer of security. And you're not worried about your phone falling into a swamp when you're in a duck blind, which is by the way, <laughs> happened to me twice. And DK, and I don't even duck hunt that much. My phone has ended up in the mud, submerged. One time, didn't know about it for an hour. I guess that's a shout pack. out to Samsung because the thing still fucking survives. And I, it's, I'm using it to record the video on this, but I digress. You know, you, you got to get, when I go duck hunting, I use a, I use a waiter, right? Like a neoprene waiter. And you just and tuck it nice in there? Velcro. No, yeah. there's like a nice Velcro here on the chest. You know, phone goes there. Wow. You, got, you go there's... duck hunting with like a full military uh, build out, huh? Hey, oh, dude, like, well, we duck hardcore. hunt, you know, like in, uh, in Lake Erie and it's like, uh, in November, it, 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 it could get cold, man. Like it could be, it could be like, you know, a nice sunny 10 degrees, but it could also be minus 15. Yeah. So like, uh, yeah. And we're there from, from dawn to dusk. It's I, hard core. I don't want to hard diverge core. us too hard into politics yeah. here, but I, I, I saw something come across my screen, maybe within the last two weeks of Trudeau's talking about banning even shotguns and like hunting rifles now in Canada is that true? Well, they, they're trying to to essentially they've been they've been trying to chew at it, right? And I think they went too far this one because they're, they're stupid, right? They really don't understand guns, like you know, right. black scary gun bad, mm-hmm. you, you know, like Woodstock gun good. Right? Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, there's a they pistol. They really want to get rid of all the guns. That's right? an assault they, rifle. Yeah, I mean, they, they hate guns, right? I mean, realistically speaking, they wish they could just get rid of all of them, right? But, we, sure. you know, we're neighbors <clears throat> of America, so that's never going to happen. And, uh, uh, and and Canada has, like, you know, like a huge gun history. Like, it's, right. this is a nation of, like, like hunters and, and, like, people who are fairly self-sovereign up until they decided to become commies, right? Yeah, it's all mountain uh, men. Yeah, exactly. Right. I mean, you're in the cities, like everybody has a pronoun. And then as soon as you leave the city, everybody's in camel, right? Like and Canada is actually a nation beards. of rednecks. Yeah. yeah. Polite rednecks. Yeah. We uh, get all the redneck credit down here, but you guys are, you know, towing your own up there for sure. Oh, yeah. 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 You know, we the have mustaches down from here. here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, anyway, so, so yeah, the, the Morans. And I think they pushed too far this time. It's hopefully going to hurt them politically too. Uh, and uh, yeah. Don't worry, I, I actually I, want them to like well, blood. I want them to ban all the guns because then they lose the next election. <laughs> we'll pack a mule with some guns for you. Send them over the border for you. There you go. Jesus, you're you're pretty it, you're pretty hardcore duck hunter. Or are you what? How much do you do it? Is it a big hobby? I I, years? I, 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 I feel my limit. <laughs> Hell yeah! I, I, I you know I limit. got into it a few years ago. We have a couple buddies at work. Shout out to Ryan and Kyle and some other Mike. Um, These guys hunt everything. Everything they that moves, everything. they'll shoot at. Yeah, humans. That's, too. that's the way. Uh, yeah. no, yep. they, they, Not uh, the humans, but yeah. they. Um, <laughs> it's so early in the morning, and it's so freezing, even down here. That like, it, it takes coaxing to get me out of retirement here. I, had, we, I didn't say, do it all uh, this grow year. Grow a pair. It's part of the <laughs> motto. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. And so that, that was a mustache comment. That was not a beard comment, right there. It's a little more. It's a bit more extreme, though. Ryan has been for the last couple of years. I don't know if he still does it, but I know a few years ago he was trying to hunt coyotes. He would be out literally all night with like night vision goggles. <laughs> Did he nice. ever actually get with one? He throw a speaker. Where, out there. where oh! I am at, we can't. Unfortunately, we can't do night hunts where I am. Uh, I don't think we can here either. He just does they, what he wants. Right. No, no. There is a bunch of states in the U.S. that like night hunts are allowed. It's kind of cool because a lot of the predators are, are night uh, night animals, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, duck hunting is cool because it's one of the only hunting's that you do a lot of shooting. 
you know, deer hunting, you'll hopefully yep. shoot something. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of lying in wait for extended periods of oh, time. Oh, yeah, hoping the ducks something are pops calling up. them and then shoot. Bo, 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 bo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyways, uh, yeah. to look back on 2022 in a different light, what stands out to you from just crypto clown land, Bitcoin innovation in general? What do you think we'll remember in say 10 years from from what happened over the yeah, last year? Yeah, I think I think uh, a lot. You know, everybody was drunk on the price. So, like, this was a, a the 2022 was a was a, a a fun bear market for a lot of people. Uh, bear markets are very interesting that way. It really sort of like uh, it forges Bitcoiners. Um, you know, I guess we pushed a bunch of product that we like. Um, the truckers, right? That that's definitely yeah. going to be. A, a, it is funny because here, like, a lot of the like, especially mainstream and everybody else just thinks that they're a bunch of Nazis still. Um, Crazy. It, it is. It is pretty absurd. Um, it, it taught a lot of Canadians that the government can can uh, uh, turn on martial law here. And, uh, and pretty they quickly, can, too. They can fucking sugarcoat it however they want, they want. But, like, a lot of people understood what the country, uh, uh, yeah. the legal system here can do. Uh, I think you, a lot of people, sorry to interrupt, throughout the world just learned a lot about how the nature of power and yes. how you know, nations drunk on it can affect your life very substantially, very quickly. The whole it, COVID thing, the the trucker thing, all of these uh, onerous regulations about wearing masks and, you know, everything. For, oh, damn near forcing va vaccinations in countries, especially like the U.S., which is traditionally, you know, freedom oriented. And so is Canada where you wouldn't expect that this ridiculous over the top um no absolute happen, absolute it just did absolute it's like you put clown world in charge like i mean yeah. like really in charge like but you know like what a massive advertising for bitcoin and freedom tech right i mean for sure. society has diverged right i mean like Used to be the only five percent of the population cared about this kind of problems, right? Now it's like a good twenty, thirty percent of the population. So like, yep. it's kind of like good that these things happen, you know, because like everybody's just being frog boiled into yep. sort of like, you know, into like a, a, a master's technology, right? Where it's like you know your banking and all the stuff because it's all easy. So like, I, I think it was great. Um, I think being optimistic about it, this is kind of what causes the pendulum swing that you see throughout history. It's the, you know, grabbing of power to such a degree in one direction, you kind of force opposition to rise up just because they recognize and that f that small 5% subset is always there, but then they get louder and people start listening to them when shit gets sideways, which it did over the last few years in my estimation. So I think I'm optimistic that this will cause a lot of change to swing in the other direction, at least get us somewhere towards a median reality. Like, people need a punch in the stomach. Oh man! You know, people yeah. need a punch in the stomach to to understand that, like, you know, they need to do something about things, right? I'd like to hear your yeah. view on um, <laughs> the whole FTX situation. More from not really about just talking about it. We all know it's a total clown show, and it's hilarious that his girlfriend's ratting on him right now. Like he's he's basically buried. I mean, there's there's we'll see how it plays out. How you know how corrupt the politique is here. But um, what I'm getting at though is it seems like the government or the governments of the world are going to love to use this as lever to pull onerous regulations in the industry and maybe even use this as an, you know, a way to introduce CBDCs as the safer route. Um, how do you view that perspective on it? Like this is a way that they're going to use to lever themselves into more regulation um, and CBDCs. I, I think so to me, uh, FTX was Air America. If, uh, if you don't know what Air America is, I highly recommend uh, going doing some reading. I'll check that out. Um, you know, this is like a full state op. Uh, you know, they were money laundering for everyone and their mother through this, through this, through this vehicle. Ooh, I uh, love the conspiracy side of this. Uh, you know, it's not a conspiracy. I mean, like, you know, it's like money from A16Z going back to A16Z. <clears throat> I mean, money from Democratic Party, like, you know, like. Yeah, it's no, not no, like I, it's an, it's kind of an overt. Yeah, I, I like totally I am not a conspiracy kind of guy, right? Like, I mean, that to me is like often lazy thinking. Like, this is like legit right there. Like, <laughs> you know, like it's right on your face, yeah. right? Uh, they're not hiding anything. Uh, another interesting thing is that it was part. It's part of the price suppression effort, right? I mean, you, you know, there was no spot ETF 
for Bitcoin, but there was there was every single mechanism to short Bitcoin was open uh, last year. Uh, FTX was essentially inflating the Bitcoin supply for that epoch by a lot. They had no Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. I think somebody calculated about like 20%. Uh, so, it's crazy. Yes, yeah, so it's like an absolute... They, they didn't even have other cryptos. Like, Dude, I mean, this plan, there was, there I was plan a fiat attack. Plan B got screwed over by FTX is basically what I'm hearing right now. <laughs> I mean, Dude, I the mean only Plan B has screwed himself failed. by having yeah, yeah. that motto, but yes. I mean, like, it's but if just, it wasn't for FTX, he would have been so, right. He, he would be right for the wrong reasons. <laughs> uh, um, so, yeah, you it, know, it like... And it, and it's been amazing because he taught a lot of people that like you know trusting the the because they had like very nice suits like I, I mean like they were like really good trading engine you know they had a very good story they were highly capitalized uh, you, you know like a lot yeah, of got, serious yeah, entities were, were doing business with them right so like and everybody got rug pulled so he taught a lot of people how to do self custody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, how many billboards do you need? Yeah. You know, Quadriga, Celsius, FTX, Alameda, Mount Gox, Block. I mean, you, you, the list could go on forever, but there, there are enough billboards that converting people to understanding that self-custody of the world's first digital bearer asset is the real discovery here. And you, you need you need to figure <laughs> it out. You don't fully own your Bitcoin unless you, you, you take that step. I mean, step. it is fascinating to me that, like, People are willing to invest, you know, say on the low side, a few thousand dollars in Bitcoin, but they're not like some people are not willing to spend a hundred bucks on a hardware wallet. <laughs> and that's crazy, isn't it? <laughs> or or invest the one hour. Right? Like, you know, that's the other the time expenditure. Like you're willing to spend that much of your hard earned capital, but you're not willing to dedicate that. one hour to they learn. They spend that looking at Mayo astrology, right? Like all those charts, you know, showing <laughs> the price of Bitcoin is going to go up. Mm -hmm. You know, they spend hours on YouTube listening to a bunch of like. You know, like retards, essentially, like talking yeah. about how the price goes up, how the price goes down. This Easily leg. identified by the uh, by the picture of them with their mouth gaping open and their eyes like yes. bright blue and like obviously manipulated in some. Yeah, it's so it's so ridiculously annoying. So, on the on the topic of listening to retards, if you're listening to this and you haven't taken the cold storage step, turn us off, dude. Flick this thing off. Head to bluecollarbitcoin.io. Scroll down to the cold cards uh, self. Uh, guides there and uh, figure this out. Stop listening to the three of us, Blatter. That, that's right. Like this is this is low signal fun. You, you know, like go get yourself self custody done before you waste your time. You, you know, like listening to me blabble about FTX and duck hunting. Folks, Swan Bitcoin is the place we point friends, family, and fellow firefighters to buy Bitcoin. Swan is a secure, education-focused, Bitcoin-only on-ramp fit for novices all the way up to full-time financial professionals. Swan's exceedingly easy-to-use interface enables you to dollar-cost average daily, weekly, or monthly, as well as conduct instant smash buys. Withdrawals to cold storage are completely free and can be totally automated. Swan wants you to hold your own private keys, and support is one click or phone call away if you need help in that process. Additionally, check out Swan Premium. This gives members exclusive Bitcoin educational content, discounts on Bitcoin products and services, and privileged access to SWAN events. Normally $20 a month, you can get SWAN Premium for free for the first year at swan.com slash premium, and it's free for firefighters at swan.com slash fire. All SWAN services can be found at swan.com. The Blue Collar Bitcoin Podcast is powered by arguably the most legendary company in Bitcoin, CoinKite. Use promo code BCB for 5% off select purchases, including the cold card, at CoinKite.com. Established block 141,000, CoinKite is an industry leader in security and hardware manufacturing. They are producers of the renowned cold card, the world's most trusted and secure Bitcoin signing device or hardware wallet. It's built with a plethora of features fit for Bitcoin beginners all the way up to the most advanced of users. This device is a one-stop shop for your Bitcoin custody needs. CoinKite also manufactures the Block Lock, a gorgeous e-ink digital art display piece sitting in the background of every serious Bitcoiner on planet Earth. Block Clock can be programmed to scroll through key Bitcoin metrics including price, hash rate, the next halving date, and much more. CoinKite are also the makers of the Open Dime, a small USB stick that allows you to spend Bitcoin like a dollar bill, passing it along multiple times. Check out CoinKite's entire suite of products at CoinKite.com. 
Uh, I wanted let's talk Noster and and maybe higher level uh, dumb winning protocols. You sent a tweet. I'm going to read a couple quotes and then I'm going to unleash you here. You sent a tweet I liked. I think it was at the end of December. You said winning protocols aren't necessarily the best tech. The best in the is in the eyes of the beholder. The more opinionated the tech, the more someone will find it to be best and someone else find it to be worst. Winning protocols are least opinionated, solving most of the problems at the right time. This quote immediately for me reminded me of Andreas Antonopoulos' piece from 2015, Why Dumb Networks Are Better. I love this. This actually, this was one of a few things that really caused Bitcoin to click. I'm going to read one quote from his piece and then let you fire. He says, this is kind of the thesis. What's smart about dumb networks is that they push innovation to the edge, giving end users control over the pace and direction of innovation. Simplicity at the center allows for complexity at the edge, which fosters the vast decentralization of services. Surprisingly, then, dumb networks are the smart choice for innovation and freedom. Your tweet, that article made me think of Noster. Obviously, it makes me think of Bitcoin. Talk to us about any of your thoughts on the significance here and, and where this might be headed. So, you know, like uh, when you talk about standards, so protocols and standards are kind of the same thing, right? It's like a bunch of different people try to talk to each other, right? So uh, if I have strong opinions on how I want to be talked to, you will likely not want to talk to me because you don't want to like agree to the same way I want to talk to you, right? Like we kind of start having like, you know, if I'm only willing to talk to you on Tuesdays wearing a red shirt and I require that you do the same, you're going to say like, go fuck yourself. Right. Like, so, so like, you know, let's just agree that we talk dress however we want, but we just use English. Right. right. So, so mm -hmm. like the chances of us having a conversation are much higher. Right. So you could use that as a heuristic for like why dumb protocols and simpler things are better because they have less opinions on less things, right? But then you can also make the argument that like, if we don't agree on the weather, on a location and other things, you know, this conversation may not be productive, right? We may not be able to do things. So like finding the balance <clears throat> on like how much spec you need to be the most productive versus accomplish, like versus being willing to compromise, right? Because com you are compromising on your opinions and on my yes. opinions mm -hmm. for us to, to have that conversation, right? So, so anyway, so Bitcoin is a bit like that, right? Uh, Bitcoin seems complex, but it's not uh, uh, in, in certain, like it is not complicated in terms of the money, moneyness of it, right? Like we agree, yeah. there's 21 million, you use it this way and that's it. You do whatever you want with it, I'll do whatever I want with mine. You know what I mean? Like not a lot of rules on that sense. So it's kind of dumb in that sense. Yeah. Um, and, and Noster, um, you know, really sort of like goes full on simple. There has not been a, pro a protocol that I've been this excited about for a very long time um, that, that is able to accomplish the most to solve a lot of problems with such simplicity, right? Um, mm -hmm. and when you start talking to like very technical people, people, they're getting to protocols and things, they're going to say, oh, well, you know, it's missing this. You can't do that. And like, you know, they're going to, but then if we add all those amazing features, a lot of other people are not going to want to use it. Mm -hmm. So I think Nasser found the perfect, <clears throat> perfect balance of complexity versus, uh, uh, productivity at the right time. Um, you know, very good timing. I mean, it's about two years old. Uh, it, it was not finding a lot of like action for a while. Uh, but there was a lot of interesting things being built, but then Jack jumped on it, brought a lot of attention to it. Uh, Elon decided to strike an effect Noster, which is like completely unknown protocol. Like, yeah, put totally. it there instead of like he just TikTok. put it in front of everyone. Right. Yeah. He didn't list TikTok. He listed Noster. Right. So like, yeah. kind of amazing. Um, so yeah, so and Noster, Noster is essentially like a, a, a open, uh, many to many, uh, messaging system, dumb relays and smart clients. So that's a good yeah. sort of like simple way of describing it. Um, and, uh, you can build anything on it. 
right? Like you, you can like anything that is more broadcast oriented, you can build on it. So Twitter like things, Reddit like things, blogs, uh, like newsletters, uh, like f like a, a markets to sell stuff, um, like a push notification, uh, GitHub like things. It's text based awesome. only, and it's signed with Bitcoin <clears throat> keys, which is kind of cool too. So it uses some Bitcoin primitives. Um, yeah, so so the first sort of like application that became obvious to everybody is like, well, let's replace Twitter, <laughs> and and like yeah. it's crazy the amount of people that are on it and like having fun on it, and and the evolution of the clients is like moving super fast as well. Um, so so it's you know it's got legs. I'm pretty pretty uh, pumped about it. So I, just from, uh, I mean, this is a very lay understanding I have of all this. I'm just wondering um, how this might look in the future. Could there be something similar to like the way we have multiple Bitcoin wallets that you might be able to choose from as for interacting with Noster? So like, let's say you kind of like the way Twitter looks, you like the way that interacts. You can just use a client that interacts with Noster that gives you that Twitter type experience. Yes. Or if you, you know, prefer something more like Facebook or something completely maybe someone will come up with something way cooler and better and that'll be the thing people use but i'm just kind of trying to explore the that's idea exactly space. it that's exactly okay. it so the clients are essentially going to choose what kind of message and what kind of like they're willing to sort of like serve to you right mm -hmm. uh and they will choose also which relays they're gonna like you're gonna choose which relays you want to connect to and you can push cool. to many relays at the same time so it's extremely censorship resistant Right, you can queue one relay, but your stuff might be in another ten relays. So a right, relay, right. just a, I just want to uh, for myself, for the audience, for everyone, explain what a relay is. It's basically a little server, or a, yep. it's almost like running a Bitcoin node, basically. Like you're running your version of Noster, you're relaying other people's messages, and you just need a computer running all the time. Or you can you be offline, online? So no, the, the relays need to be online. I, I okay. believe relays are going to be run by people that want to read relays. They're not, not a lot of people are going to run their own relays, but it is similar in Bitcoin that like uh, nobody needs permission to do anything. Right. And, and you choose who you want to talk to. The difference is not all relays have all the data. Unlike Bitcoin where every gotcha. node has all the data, right? Yeah. That probably just wouldn't be possible. Exactly. There's going to be shit tons of data. Yes. Oh, boy, yes. <laughs> and there's a lot of data that you yeah. might not want to, like, have on your server, too. Right. Yeah. How would, how do you think that's going to work? Like, let's just say there are people or entities out there that are saying shit or doing shit that you're not cool with. How could block you block them? Give, you can just block them. But how could you know if you don't know about them, they could be going straight through your... I mean, I'm all for open, all you know, the data letting everyone public. do whatever, but... Let's put it this way. All the data is public. Yeah. I mean... Technically, you could make your relay private, but like, let's just assume that all the public data is public, right? Mm -hmm. um, and it's signed by the people who alter that data, right? So when I send a, a note out, uh, you know, I sign that note with my public key pair. Um, and, uh, you know, like some relays may allow me to connect to them and push my data to them. Like, for example, our relay brb.io is connected to Noster and I push my, sorry, it's connected to Damus, which is one client that imitates Twitter. Uh, and I push my data there. Now, if you're not listening to, to the relays that I'm pushing my data to, you're not going to see it. Uh, but that doesn't mean the data is not public, right? Because you may add those relays later and they might still have that data there and you might end up taking the data down. So, um, assume, assume all the stuff could be public. Like, yeah. you know, what you're trying to do is public anyways, right? Uh, sure. You do right. have encrypted messages as well, right? So right now, though, you can tell who's sending messages to who, even though message itself is encrypted. There is some some work, draft work on how to make that more private. But it's kind of similar to Bitcoin that way, too. It's pseudonymous, right? right so right. like all the transaction data is public. Uh, you may not know who's sending it. Um, and you may not know what they're using it for, but it is out there. The, it totally reframes the thing, the way we think through, let's just take social media as the first you know, use case. And that's total freedom at the base and then client user choice above that, right? Instead of, so it, it just putting this protocol spin on it, this decentralized censorship resistant protocol spin, like 
end users can still decide what they want filtered in and out, right? Instead of one centralized body or company or agency deciding what's right and what's wrong, right? And I think for for someone that's listening is like, you guys have said Nostra 28 times. And I still don't know what the fuck you're talking Go about. Try it. We've kind of it's uh, the best try way. it and. It's just it's a for right, right now this the first application that's getting a lot of hype is, is censorship resistant Twitter alternative basically and I think it is worth hashing out like you have you have baby people that aren't as ingratiated in this space thinking what's wrong with Twitter everything well it does a lot of great <laughs> things but there's a huge there's huge problems Here, here's a few things I wrote down while you were talking in from my perspective as a firefighter there's al- algorithms and centralized people sorting content in ways i i really have no fucking clue what's showing up on my feed and why right. um censoring people left and right we're going to ping right we're going to ping left different political climates yep there's going to be all kinds of control advertisements galore not that they're bad but your feed saturated with that spam galore right yeah uh, that's that's a current problem. It's not like that's been solved on the current application. Dude, just these Twitter papers that came out recently showing the FBI leaning on Twitter in order to affect some political views. Like this stuff is insane. Like we that is that for me is enough reason to try something on that's an alternative like Noster. That's yeah. a, that's easily good enough and there's a very you know, there's a vast amount of other reasons as well. You know, what's fascinating to me is that th- there were like a bunch of Twitter alternatives out there, like uh, Mastodon and yeah. uh, Discord and all those things. But these things, you're just trading a master master to another master, right? right. It's just, uh, just like, going to another plantation. Yeah, exactly. You're just going to another plantation, right? And and it's completely unrealistic on those on the way that those protocols work for you to run your own. Uh, and they just block you anyway. So, like, it's, you know, I, I run a massive Mastodon instance because there was no alternative and I wanted to have a backup for Bitcoiners to coordinate. Um, but I'm going to close that down as soon as there is clients for both Android and iOS on the store. Uh, and, you know, and people often ask, like, why are Bitcoiners so interested in this thing, right? Because it's not Bitcoin, right? I mean, he uses Bitcoin primitives. Uh, for cryptography and and it does sort of like have a lot of like lightning people wanted to do payments with it and all that stuff yeah but like why right well because it's like freedom tech because bitcoin is the money but you still need to communicate in order to have trade right in order to coordinate things so like we need a medium to coordinate for our amazing money right so like i'm super excited that we have now this this potential thing that could be the thing that we use to like talk to each other to then send money to each other, right? Like, because like if you have the Bitcoin but you can't talk to anyone, like it's kind of a problem too. Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. So you can always do it about the old ham radio. I mean, we just we should just all get ham radios. I mean, I, hey, okay. listen, I am I am all for that. <laughs> <laughs> He's a big ham guy. I know, but yeah, I, from the from my pea sized brain in this regard, it seems like it's dumb enough to potentially win. That's why I brought it up at the beginning. I mean, you think about protocols and innovations that have succeeded they are really stupid like tcpi is just a dumb data pipeline at the end of the day bitcoin doesn't do all that much at the base layer right it just it, it time stamped and, and you know i mean it's it's pretty simple it, right it, when you really dumb it down think about roadways think about printing press stuff that accomplishes something that allows people to build without permission on top of it unlocking a high exactly, kind of innovation exactly Nostra has that potential. You know, the way it's, I like to think of it is like, you know, like uh, with Bitcoin, it's similar to electricity, right? So like the power company, which is centralized, but let's sort of pretend it isn't, right? It delivers electricity to your house. How do you use your electricity is your own fucking problem, right? Like nobody's telling you like, no, you cannot plug a toaster, sir. Uh, uh, you know what I mean? Like, not yet. Exactly. I don't know. It might happen. They want to go there, right? But, you better but, log in your toaster and ask for permission. But this idea of like having – you have these pipes, right, that are completely invisible to you too. People don't – like half people don't understand how electricity works, right? Like, But like you have this thing. Magic. Right? That That is incredibly <laughs> important to your life, right? Yep. Uh, incredible amount of value. Uh, you can't essentially live without. Uh, money is one of them, right? And Bitcoin makes the money dumb. Right, it makes you be able to spend the money however you want, and it makes it so that nobody else can cheat you out of your money uh, uh, inflation. Uh, and Noster is doing essentially that for communication now, right? So right. Uh, essentially, you can have uh, the communication delivered to you in different ways uh, for whatever purpose you want to do it. Right? Nobody can tell you what you are allowed or not allowed to say or do with that message. 
CrowdHealth provides their members the tools to successfully navigate the complexities of healthcare and pay for medical bills through the power of crowdfunding. Each member gets access to great health services like telemedicine and discounted prescriptions, as well as their own dedicated care advocate that will negotiate your bills and find you the best doctors and hospitals on your behalf. Members also get access to the crowd to help fund large health events. Because members own their own accounts, CrowdHealth provides investment opportunities with your balance. Through their partnership with Swan Bitcoin, members can invest 75% of their monthly account balance in Bitcoin. Kick insurance to the curb and save money and time by making the switch to CrowdHealth today. BCB listeners can enjoy healthcare freedom with code BLUE and get their first three months for only $99 per month. CrowdHealth is not insurance, and we think that's a good thing. Go to joincrowdhealth.com to learn more. The cloud is just someone else's computer. Everything you do online is intermediated and permissioned. Your data is not yours. Opt out by running a private server and take back control over your digital life. Until now, running a private server has only been available to the technical and the wealthy. The team at Start9 has developed an operating system called Embassy OS that levels the playing field and makes it possible for everyone else. Run a Bitcoin node, run a Lightning node, and become your own everything. Embassy OS is the distribution platform open source software has been waiting for. You can download Embassy OS for free and install it on your own hardware. Or you can buy one of Start9's plug and play devices. They build reliable products backed up with incredible customer support. Visit Start9.com. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm going to throw my hat in the ring with one more way to analogize this to because I don't think we've beaten this to death enough yet. But uh, you mentioned the printing press and in a, and these simple protocols like the printing press. That's a simple protocol. But guess what? It doesn't create a book. It just creates the method for distributing that book. So you need somebody with a brain or somebody with some idea or some to disseminate the information using that printing press. And that's effectively what Bitcoin is and what Noster is, is it's a free and open printing press to allow your ideas to proliferate throughout the world. But it's even better because there's nobody that can stop that information flow. There's no one, you know, it's just. No, and, you, and, I, it's, I it becomes, it's, and it's whack-a-mole, right? Like you can start killing like relays left, right, and center because like a lot of them are going to be on centralized hosting companies, right? But like, but that doesn't mean the information doesn't live on somewhere else, right? right. So that, that's why it's so cool. It's that like. It Man, becomes, I'm way more excited about this right now. It, became, it becomes like it's asymmetric, right, in terms of like trying to kill it. So you. You're just gonna have a lot of like redundancy on on that information, and information wants to be free, right? Uh, it's gonna be really, really hard to enforce copyright on uh, uh, on digital content, right? Because you're just not gonna have somebody to go be uh, put in jail. Uh, th there's gonna be a lot of that, uh, you know. Like you're gonna find this to be a great place to dump, you know, like research information that people want to charge for or you know like a lot of things that are text based uh, are going to live on this and they're not going to be able to be taken down and i also think it is worth throwing in here for people that are worried about this or picking at it you have to envision yourself not being in say the united states as many imperfections as we've thrown at canada and the u.s like a, a, a something Lynn wrote in her most recent December newsletter, the Freedom House classifies countries as free or partly free or not free. Only 20% of countries right now meet their definition of free, down from 46% in 2005. So if you're trapped in some autocratic regime and you have no fucking clue what's actually going on in the world and all your information is censored, think about the power of being able to tap into a relay that's totally uncensored on Nostra with a giant hive mind. Yep. Of people in there i do get the counter arguments like you don't want your 12 year old being solicited by pedophiles on noster but that's where things are going to get pushed to the client side it's just going to flip things on yeah. their head you're going to have the ability to choose which apps are viable which aren't and it's just gonna it's going to unlock all this potential of how you want to interact with it yep. but there's going to be the ability to get all of it Dan, at the base you, somewhere somehow you just identified the attack vector man that's the that's the first place they're going to protect the children yeah, but yep. with this thing is over, right? I mean, like, how are they going to put the little message saying, uh, you know, like, uh, the you have wrong things, sir. This vaccine 
is like your information about vaccine is, is incorrect. Like it, it's it's absolutely over. Like it, it's like the same way that Bitcoin changed the dynamic for money. This thing changed the dynamic for for broadcasted information. Um, mm-hmm. you, you know, and we've learned that uh, governments will go after right. Like they 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 completely cock Twitter. Uh, they you did know, you say cock Twitter? Yes. Uh, <laughs> they, they, just wanted to make sure. Yes. Uh, Great use of the term, by the way. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> we can't make that the title because then we'll yeah, get no, you know, we'll you got You got to make this like very, uh, so very. so bad. Want that to be the title. I know. You got to you got to make this uh, very clean so more people get to the cucked part of it. Uh, yep. Jack Dorsey's just making Elon watch, too. It, that's like, what it's, I'm saying. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think Jack Dorsey might be the new Bitcoin Jesus. He gave 14 Bitcoins to Noster to help uh, bootstrap them along. <laughs> Bitcoin, Jesus. Um, he's just uh, like, I mean, prolific, obviously very wealthy and really generous guy who has been helping this protocol. He's putting, in he's every putting his money in his reputation. Yeah, he's putting his money in his reputational, where his uh, capital, where his mouth is. I, I think, and you, you I think it's hard it. for a person with the, the, right, the, the heart in the right place to not try to uh, to help things like this, right? Uh, you know, listen, everybody's going to come from different places. Everybody's going to have different motives. Everybody's going to have different preferences, right? I mean, I may not agree with a bunch of like, you know, like woke people who join this thing or whatever, but like, yeah, I think it's important that everybody sort of like converge on freedom tech, uh, For sure. you know, in the marketplace of ideas, if it's truly free, it's going to start out who wins, right? Of course it's the end cap people, but like. You, you know, it's, I always joke that uh, commie Bitcoiners are, are in for a rude awakening. Um, <laughs> you know, yeah. like, but hey. <laughs> you know what? Those, a lot of those, those people are mostly living in their parents' basement and they're not going to, they're not really, you know, creating any offspring. So but they'll the, kind yeah, of just take care of itself. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, before we let you go, there's, I mean, this isn't just an easy question we always have to toss at you. What do you think is going to happen in 2024 with the happening? You think that people have been, have seen enough of this where they're like they've learned their lesson and it won't do the same thing it's always done, or do you think um, do you think it'll just do it again? You think it'll just rack it off with the happening like it's done four times in the past? Now's your chance to create a bullshit model. Well, let, let me yeah. get uh, uh, my white Bitcoin second. and uh, no, no, but realistically <laughs> yeah, speaking, get your guys, whiteboard, like, throw information them. is 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 like super asymmetric, right? Like nobody has access mm. to all the information all the time and markets are extremely imperfect. So, um, you, you know, Bitcoin <clears throat> is not in the news anymore, right? So, uh, and everybody's going to be in despair. Everybody's going to be, you know, we're in that part of the market, the, the cycle now, right? So um, people don't, the new people coming in don't, understand the dynamic of the happening right it doesn't matter how much they look at it how much they study it like you know it's very sort of like foreign right so that does mm-hmm. have sell pressure dynamics that are different right you go from selling 10 to now go selling five right because the miners dump on the market right so Right. I, I mean, like you, you can infer whatever you will, but like you know, nothing is priced in, right? So you're gonna have a consequence to that. I mean, you know, and the, the normal consequence is the price to go up, and, and that does happen every single time. Uh, uh, you know, it's kind of like when people are talking about like this is the this is the final cycle and all that bullshit. I'm like. You clearly just haven't been in the space for long enough. Like this shit's going to dump at some point. <laughs> I mean, we clearly didn't get to the yeah. high as high as it was supposed to be. Just historically speaking, we didn't even have a proper all-time high. 69 was pathetic. Uh, uh, Great number, yeah. though. We agree. I'm glad uh, it hit there. Great number. Yeah, it was properly done it, by Bitcoin. Exactly. At, at so, like, K. I think a lot of people took that by surprise that didn't go as high as supposed to and that confused the market and you had ftx and you had all this like you know pumponomics and leverage it was the first time that we had a lot of leverage in bitcoin uh so yeah i mean you know prices pri- nothing is priced in <laughs> yeah let's end with efficient food. market theories and nonsense yeah we got to talk food before you go um god 
bless it, is your Twitter just make me salivate. Uh, what's your favorite cut of meat? Oh, dude, uh, I'm not a favorites kind of guy, but like I do have a handful of goals too that really make me happy. Uh, picanha being one of them, which is uh, 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 it's a sirloin cap tri tip there uh, with <clears> the fat <throat> on. Uh, very few cuts of meat taste like well as that. Uh, Bavette. Uh, it's not something you're gonna find in every butcher, but if you ask your butcher, he probably knows what that is. Uh, skirt. Mm-hmm. Um, I do like uh, I do like uh, uh, a good uh, strip loin, especially if you're getting from the 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 bigger piece that has the sinew around, and you just cut that sinew out before yeah. you cook it. It's amazing. Uh, have you guys entertained the idea of a coin kite cookbook? <laughs> you, you know what? We just we're gonna we're gonna just do a, a, a sexy calendar of beef. Oh, there you go. We'll be uh, Josh and I will be uh, November go. and December. There you go. In that, one. Um, <laughs> if so, yeah. If you're w- the, you're serving one meal to Satoshi Nakamoto, right? He's coming to your cabin or whatever. You got to plate one meal for oh, him. What, dude, what is it? Fuck that. No heroes. <laughs> yeah, you're right. He gets the same. He, he gets, has he a, gets the yeah, same no, plate we do. Fine. Yeah, you know he's welcome to come for barbecue, but he's gonna get served at everybody else. Ground has. beef. It's a. It's a. It's gonna be an open barbecue. Love it. Beautiful. Hey, dude. Thanks, thanks for, for coming for on, me, guys. NDK. I, I love the energy on this pod. It's always a pleasure. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll thanks. have you on again. Uh, any any handoffs or things you want our audience to know before you sign off here and actually get to. Productive uh, things in your day. Uh, I'm actually recording in an hour the the my new pod thing. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna be talking about uh, estates and Bitcoin concerns around estates. Uh, that should be interesting for anybody that hasn't mm. checked it out. It's uh, Bitcoin dot review. Uh, so it's been it's been fun it's doing pod. that. I mm-hmm. I appreciate now how much fucking work it is to have a pod. <laughs> It's it more up, than man. Yeah. It's more than people think. Hey, listen, sure. uh, thank you guys. Keep on educating people. It's uh, that that's the that's the gig. Appreciate you. Thank you. Keep protecting <laughs> our Bitcoin. That's right. That's the gig. <laughs> you guys have an awesome day. <laughs> you too. Take care. <laughs>